I would now like to introduce my brother, Paul Probson, who is going to say a few words about Pink Miracle and its artists. And for those of you who don't know, my brother is also the executive director of Covenant Community Care in downtown Detroit, which provides health services and dental services to the uninsured and underinsured. Well, it's raining outside, but the sun is shining in here. And Denise, um, it's funny, uh, it's wonderful you came to share your story. Thank you for doing that. I, I hadn't discovered your art until today, and if you haven't seen Denise's work over here, um, you're in for a treat. I hope you take a minute afterwards to go that way, because Denise it is amazing and wonderful. And the piece that I had my eye on was gone before I could return to the table. So. Just from the Shelly uh, microphone placement to run a little more suitable. If anyone normal size comes up, they're going to have to really put that right there. Um, all the best stories our love stories. I'm going to tell you a love story about an artist who had some of her work here with us today. It is a story about love and pain, endurance, suffering, courage, and determination. It's a story about death and life. It's a story about her but it's also a story about you and about me. It is a story about Suzanne Sipple. A little over a year ago, Suzanne had never heard of pain miracle. She was suffering from ALS. ALS is often referred to as Lou Gehrig's disease. It is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that affects nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord. With voluntary muscle action progressively affected, patients in the later stages of the disease may become totally paralyzed. Suzanne had a neighbor, Karen Dalazana, who began to bring her own daughter, Jessica, to the studio at Pain and Miracle for Art Classes. Jessica has some artwork over here, which is also beautiful, and I would encourage you to go and take a look at Jessica's artwork. And Jessica and Karen are here today. During her first couple of trips to the studio, Karen began to feel a strong tug on her heart that she should invite her neighbor, Suzanne, whom she knew had an artistic gift, to come to the studio too. And like many of us, when she first felt that inclination, she didn't respond to it. Uh, she said she felt God was calling her to, to invite Suzanne to the studio. When she went back the second time, she felt an even stronger pull to invite Suzanne. And when she went home, she got an email from Suzanne, who she had never received an email from before, about a totally unrelated issue. And that was when she said, well, that's it. I have to respond. So she did. She invited Suzanne to come with her and Jessica to the studio. Karen began to drive Suzanne to paint a miracle every Friday for a semi-private lesson, along with her own daughter, Jessica. This thoughtful and loving action by Karen opened the door for her to become closer to her neighbor, Suzanne. And she was then able to help Suzanne and her family in several other ways during the most difficult time of her life. Over the year of taking classes at the studio, Suzanne's mobility and health declined noticeably. And there came a day when, due to the deterioration of her strength, Suzanne was no longer able to leave her wheelchair to get in the car to ride to the studio with Karen and Jessica. But that barrier would not stand in Karen's way for long. Karen made it her quest to find Suzanne a van with a wheelchair lift. 
And lo and behold, she did find such a van up north for Suzanne to use. And the weekly trip to the art studio began again. My sister Shelly shared with me how Suzanne was so amazing and how she dealt with her ALS. As her disease progressed, she patiently watched as her instructors, Lynn and Aaron, found new ways to make it possible for her to continue her art despite her lack of mobility. As Shelley tells it, Suzanne never complained to me. I just remember her smile, and it was clear how much she enjoyed her art. The day Suzanne died, she was still trying to get to art class. Suzanne's last painting is here for, is here for us to see. We can only imagine the strength and determination and the concentration needed to create this work of art. What were her thoughts as her mind fights to coerce her body to produce the desired image? And what of her eyes that looked upon this last work of art? Likely knowing that this would be the last artistic legacy of a life's work, and in fact, Karen shared with me that Suzanne asked Erin to bring all of her artwork out that day so she could sign it. So she knew she was near the end of her trips to Pain Miracle. She knew that this body would not be able to obey the artist's heart any longer. And what of that heart that brought life to this canvas that day, who can put a value on her heart? Who can measure her depth and breadth of heart? But we do have a hint of the depth of Suzanne's strength, even on her last trip to the art studio. As you can see, this painting has a drip down the side, caused by the manner in which the canvas had to be inclined to accommodate her relative immobility. Suzanne was so frustrated by this imperfection that she insisted on painting it again that day. And so the blank sheet was mounted again and the paints were again laid out for Suzanne. And in, in an act of the will which can only be described as indicative of the essence of the human spirit, Suzanne created a final work of art. And if we can put up Suzanne's last image It'll be there. <laughs> there it is. Now just imagine in your final month of life, in your final few weeks of losing your strength, to complete a work of art and to say, I can do better. I want one more try before I'm done today. And so they, they began again, and here is what she produced for her last image. Its simplicity and beauty abound in a harmony of life and light. What effort is represented by each motion, each brushstroke, and yet, how effortless it is in its completion for us to view. Let us take a moment together to contemplate this masterwork of art and the courageous woman who created it and the love and devotion of her neighbor Karen and of Lynn and Shelley and Aaron and everyone at the studio who helped make it possible. And if I can, I would like to ask Suzanne's family, her husband Vern, and Karen and Jessica and everyone at their table to stand and just receive a round of applause on Suzanne's behalf.
we thank you all for your courage and your uh, your strength in uh, sharing in Suzanne's strength. Now, as you recall, I began this story by saying it was about Suzanne, but also by saying it was about you and I as well. We can see in this story three critical moments. First, when Karen felt moved to invite Suzanne to the studio, a neighbor whom she knew was suffering, but by who no means was an intimate friend. And how often do we ignore that prompting to get involved in the lives of others who are suffering? And would that we would respond as Karen did in making the invitation to join our lives with others who are in need of a friend. The second critical moment was when Suzanne became unable to reach the studio because she could not go without her wheelchair. And who among us would scour the state to find a vehicle to bring our now precious friend to an art studio? Would that we would have the persistence and stubbornness to ensure the very best for those we love, regardless of the effort or cost to ourselves, as Karen did. And the third critical moment, the most amazing moment, was when Suzanne completed what would have been her final painting with the imperfection of the drip down the side. And I know from the family and from, from Karen and Aaron that, that the, the, the painting with the drip is just as beautiful as the painting without it because together they make the message. But as exhausted mentally and physically as she must have been at that moment, she would not rest, she would not quit until she was satisfied with the painting. And who among us has not become frustrated with our own imperfections this week, or this year, or this very day? And would that we would have the determination and courage to overcome our own imperfections, as Sir Suzanne did in her last trip to the studio. Each one of us, both our artists here today, and all of us who come as guests and admirers of these inspiring artists, each one of us is in the same kind of story as Suzanne and Karen's. We are in need of family and friends who love us if we are to realize our full potential. We recognize our own imperfections and the barriers which hold us back. And we can learn from these courageous women who overcame all frustrations and obstacles to create a beautiful bond of love and friendship, perfectly symbolized by this bouquet of flowers, painstakingly crafted by the artist whose every muscle was atrophying throughout their amazing year together. What is the message for you and I? To persist, to abide, to endure, to fight, to strive, and to never ever say of any challenge, it is too hard for me. Let this work of art from Suzanne be a part of you forever. Life is not too hard for us if we can learn to see each barrier each frustration as a task for which we were made to master. None of us needs to be reminded that what holds us back seems immense and that at times we feel powerless, even immobilized in our efforts. But let us see in Suzanne's life that we were made for victory and that there is nothing that the human spirit cannot accomplish when love is present. And I am proud to present for you one last time the victory bouquet that Suzanne will be carrying into heaven. Thank you. And I would like you to take a moment to today to consider um, how you can continue uh, to bless and change and grow the lives of others, uh, people with disabilities, people with challenges, and people like you and me who need Pain a Miracle in order to bloom. Uh, I think of Rochester and what a blessing it is for our town to have this tremendous gift for people we love to participate in and 
and to draw in from people around the community outside of Rochester who need what Rochester has in Native American. On your table, there are uh, opportunities for you to give. There are envelopes. Um, there are ways uh, for you to make a commitment today or to make a gift. You can give that to Shelly, you can give that to me, or you can uh, take it to the desks where you came in and registered. Uh, you can mail it in, but don't miss it. It's there on your table, and uh, the gifts that you can give are a part of the gifts that we will be receiving here for the next 10 years, and the artists that we have not met, the people who we have not seen, whose lives have not yet been changed, but who we know will uh, be the future of this uh, paint a miracle. Thank you.